tell you what parasite is. That was a word I that was a term out of that I was hoping you would recall from Tuesday. But no, nobody wanted to put that for. Okay, what about algae? Well, algae are eukaryotes, which means they have a nucleus. Rickettsia? What about rickettsia? They are prokaryotes. They come along with the bacteria. They're prokaryotes. The protozoa are eukaryotes. And the mycoplasma are prokaryotes. So how about that? That's the way we worked it out yesterday, last time. And these are also obligate intracellular parasites. So we are going to be very much focused on my statement that structure commands, defines, and permits function. And the structure of the cellularity is coming to give us all of the possible functions. Can you repeat that about the structure, please? Yeah, I'll try. The structures permit all the functions or make possible all functions. And that's because of what kind of a cell you are made up of or non-cell you're made up of. So we're going to see some very, very interesting biologic phenomena. When we talk about living things, we talk about the properties of protoplasm, there should be conductivity, contractility, reproducibility, metabolism, excretion, movement, all of those things that make up living protoplasm. And that's a kind of a generic word. It means the stuff that's in the cell, like cytoplasm, except if you don't have a cell, you don't have any of this. So it's going to see a lot of differences. All of the bacteria that we will study fall into this category, category, all of our bacteria. And we use that as the model of how this works. Now, we're heading into history. That's where we're heading. But before we do that, I want to just make you think about those seven groups of organisms. Think about something like, what is their function in the world? And I suspect that you know a good bit about microorganisms right now, today, without learning anymore. You know that they are involved in a number of functions in the world. Could you name the role of uh, some of these seven groups of organisms? What is the role of microbes? Do they help us or hurt us? But if we don't change their habitat, they're not going to hurt us. They hurt us when their habitat changes. They're harmless in their normal habitat. So what do they do in the world? Tell me what they do. Digestion. Digestion? Do I hear digestion? Yeah. Okay. And how would you mean that? Intestinal bacteria. The intestinal, well, actually, the intestinal bacteria don't do the digestion, but they do produce something in the digestive tract, which is what? Vitamin K. They produce vitamin K for us. So in digestion, they help us by making vitamin K, but that's involved in clotting, not digestion. When you say digestion on the larger sense, do you mean the change from organic materials to their inorganic elements, which is what we see in the outside world, that they are the degraders of organic material. So they do digest. In sewage, they digest organic waste as well. So there is an involvement there, but we think of them as the degraders, if you will. They return organic material to inorganic material. Return organics to the substance that they're made up of, or the inorganic. And where do we see that? Well, we see that a lot in the nitrogen-fixing bacteria in the soil. Well, they fix nitrogen. That's a way of digesting. Anything else? Let me hear another role. Yes? Reproduce. They reproduce. Reproduce? Mm -hmm. But how would that help us? Um, Think of a way that an industry could use that. Yeah, maybe like making yogurt. So very 
much involved in the dairy industry? I don't want to call it a business, so I'll call it an industry. You can't get yogurt without the uh, action of microorganisms. You can't get cheese without the action of microorganisms. Sour cream, can't get any of those products. Any of the cheeses all rely on the action of microorganisms, absolutely. And sometimes uh, you can see the microorganisms in the cheese. You know how the French used to make blue cheese? They'd get a big bunch of cream and they would let maggots crawl through it. And when they crawled through it, they would bring fungi with them. So when you cut into the blue cheese, you see all that blue stuff, which happens to be delicious. But occasionally, if you got a really fresh French cheese and you did that, you would cut through, there'd be a maggot in there. Not, not all that appetizing. You know, we don't, at this point in life, I, I don't know, this is a very general statement, I was going to say we don't eat insects. Do you think that's true? I mean, some people no, do eat not insects, yet. but not, not yet. directly. There's, 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 there's saying a new industry that's coming up that's using cricket flour. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know. <laughs> well, you know what? Seriously, if you didn't have anything to eat, you'd probably eat anything you could, right? That's right. Yeah. So crunching up bugs. But I read an article that said that we're going to be farming insects for increase in the food the bio food mass. Did you read that? Yes, yes. How disgusting is that at this point to me? Although I have eaten chocolate covered they're, ants. They're already <laughs> producing for the moms who are interested in, in nutrition for their children cricket bars. They're like um, they're like soy you know, the pro protein bars, but they're made with cricket flour. Mm -hmm. Cricket meal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was just stuck on getting blue cheese down. You've given that to a whole new level. Um, but that's, you know, if we were introduced to that and it worked out fine, we would not have any aversions to it. I try to disassociate myself from where food comes from, you know. I don't want to think about chickens. I like them all wrapped in plastic in the supermarket. <laughs> I don't want to see them going down the road with their heads sticking out of the trucks. Have any, any of you have seen that? That's a pretty ghastly sight. I don't want to think about a slaughterhouse. Actually, I don't even want to think about those products. But, so in, in the event of a big disaster, I'm the first one to go. I won't be able to provide myself with food at all. But if you think back to our origin, our ancestors provided themselves with all their food. Didn't they? Mm -hmm. They did. And we're stuck here running to um, stop and shop in the middle of the night trying to, trying to buy some hamburger. That's a disgusting item, right? Hamburger? <laughs> All right, so, yeah, how do we get off on this? Here's an interesting thought. Who was the first person to eat an oyster? Who thought about opening up that shell and swallowing that slimy stuff? Really? I think they must have seen birds do it, you know, drop them on the rocks and then eat them. But the thought of opening them up, I will tell you this again, just because I like to be disgusting. But when you swallow an oyster, you are swallowing a rectum. <laughs> you you did this class before lunch on purpose? Or no. <laughs> no, but that's the biology of the oyster, is that you are actually swallowing a rectum. <laughs> and shrimp are not so high. <laughs> okay. Well, that's why I like to not think about where my food comes from. That's why I, you know, peanut butter is terrific. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else? What other industry depends on microorganisms? Yes. There's loads of them, but, you know, medicine. You know, oh, yeah, absolutely. Drugs. Yeah, food and beverage, I guess, like, you know, bakery depends like for bread, you know, for yeast, for... For fuel, you know, breaking down fuel, use them for, you manipulate them to... I'll sit down. You don't <laughs> 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 there's, there's some multitude of things. Yeah. They're running multitude Absolutely. Of things. A multitude of things are we, that we're dependent on. He mentioned the baking industry. If you want anything to rise, you have to have yeast or it won't rise. 